In this video, we're going to be looking at alpha diagrams or orbital diagrams, but for ions. So if you missed my previous video where I go through alpha diagrams, I go through energy levels, I go through the different orbitals and how this works, you need to click the link above. So you'll see a little thing flashing across the screen that says click this now or check out the links in the description box below. But we're going to jump into drawing alpha diagrams for an iron. So a super quick recap, this does not mean that you shouldn't go watch the previous video because you must, but a super quick recap, this is what a blank orbital diagram looks like. So this is what you're going to be filling in for me. Now we generally, at a school level, stop over here at 4s. There are d orbitals, there are also f orbitals, but we work with s and p orbitals. So we will only work with atoms or with ions that go up to here on the diagram because there are some d and f orbitals that slot in somewhere around here now we get an s orbital s orbitals can hold a total of two electrons so each little round circle here can hold one two energy level one starts right at the bottom you always start energy level one at the bottom it's the closest to the nucleus only has one orbital it only has an s orbital then we've got energy level two. You can see energy level two over here. We've got two s, that's the s orbital. Remember the s orbital can only hold two electrons. And then we've got the p orbital. Now notice how the p orbital is made up of three circles. Each circle can hold two electrons. So the p orbitals in total can hold six electrons. What that means is that energy level two in total can hold eight electrons. Two, four, six, eight. Then we've got energy level three, also has an S and a P orbital, and energy level four. Now, as a quick reminder, if I ask you to draw the alpha diagram or the orbital diagram, and I say I want it, for example, for the phosphorus atom, what you do is you go to your periodic table and you look for phosphorus. Phosphorus is over here. And you look and you see, okay, cool, phosphorus has 15 electrons. Remember, it's always the small number. Then you go to your diagram. Now, you do not need to fill out this entire diagram. You can fill in the energy levels and circles as you go along. So phosphorus has 15 electrons. So we start at energy level one and we go one, two. Each electron needs to spin or point in the opposite direction because of Pauli's exclusion principle. I did this in the previous video. So one, two, three, four. Then when, when we fill out the p orbital, each circle gets one, and then we start at the beginning again. So, so far we've got one, two, three, four, then we go five, six, seven, then start at the beginning again. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, because I did not fill these two things on my diagram, you can scratch them out. They do not need to be a part of your answer. So that would be the alpha diagram for the phosphorus atom. But now what if the question says, draw the alpha diagram or the orbital diagram or even the SP notation or electron configuration for an iron. So phosphorus iron or sodium iron, that is different to an atom. So if they ask for the diagram of an atom, then you look at your periodic table and whatever atom it is, you look at that atom's number of electrons and that's what you do, those number of electrons. So for example, if I say the magnesium atom, you will draw a diagram with 12 electrons, okay, because this number of here is 12. Sodium atom, you'll draw a diagram with 11 electrons. But if they say an iron, this is something different. Now, an iron is formed, and you should know this already from chemistry this year, an iron is formed when an atom gains or loses an electron. So if you are a neutral atom and you get an extra electron, okay, so someone gives you one extra electron. Electrons are negative. So you do you become more negative or do you become more positive? Well, if you were neutral and someone gives you an extra negative thing, an electron, which is negative, you become more negative. So a negative ion is formed when electrons are gained. So this is how it works. For example, we can get the chloride ion, Cl minus, we can get the oxide ion, O2 minus, and so on. What this means is that this is a chlorine atom, 
that has gained one electron. How do I know that it's gained one? Because it's got a minus one over here. This oxide atom, okay, oxide iron, is an oxygen atom that has gained two electrons. How do I know that it's gained two electrons? Because of the minus two. And I know that this is confusing because you're thinking, what? It's got a minus, but it's gaining an electron. So if you're getting something extra, why are you minusing? It's because you're getting something that is negative. Okay, so negative ions, they're negative, they're bad, they're sad. We call them anions. It sounds like onions and onions make you cry. That's how I remember it. Cations are different. When an atom loses an electron, so think about an atom, it's neutral. Then you take the negative stuff and you give it away. Whether you give away one electron or two or three or whatever the case is, you're giving away negatives. So you become positive. It's called a positive ion. It's called a cation. Positive, cat. Cats are positive. Pause, positive. Cat, cation. Do you see where I'm going with this? So I remember it's how I teach it. And this is happens when electrons are lost. So examples of cations could be the sodium ion, Na+, or the magnesium ion, Mg2+, something like that. So again, the plus means that you've lost one electron. The two plus means you've lost two electrons. So how do I know, I know what some of you are thinking, ma'am, how do I know that it's Na plus and not Na plus two? And how do I know that it's Mg two plus? Well, when you get your periodic table, you need to write the charges on your periodic table. These are called the valencies, and this is how your periodic table should look, and I have shown you this in a previous video. This first group over here, so the group is the long column over here, that is group one, it has a charge of plus one. Then we've got group two, which is this group over here, it has a charge of plus two. You skip the middle bits because those are transition elements, then you go plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Okay, so these are called the valencies, there are the charges, the reason they have these charges is because of their alpha diagrams and their valence electrons and how many they need to reach a full stable configuration or how many they need to lose to reach a full noble gas stable configuration. But you can learn it. Plus one, plus two, skip the middle, plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. So for example, if I say I want you to draw the diagram for the, let's say, calcium iron, you'll say, okay, calcium's here it's got a charge of plus two. So the calcium ion will actually be one of these. It'll be Ca2+, which means it has lost two electrons. And what that means is that, take a look at calcium, take a look at calcium over here. Calcium has, the atom has 20 electrons. See, Ca, 20. But if it's the calcium ion, because it has a charge of plus two, it means that it has lost two electrons. So it no longer has 20, it will then now have 18. I hope that makes sense. If I say to you, okay, grade 10s, I want you to draw the, let's say, fluoride ion. Fluoride ion? Fluoride ion is fluorine. Fluorine has a charge. Let's go to my periodic table where I just did the charges over here. Fluorine has a charge of negative one. Okay, so it's an anion. That means that it gets an extra electron. Remember, if, you've, if you have a negative charge, so look here, if you have a negative charge, this one's over here, it means you've gained an electron. So fluorine is F minus. It means that fluorine has gained one extra electron. And if you look at the periodic table, fluorine had nine, it's going to get one extra. So therefore, you will draw a diagram that has 10 electrons. I hope that makes sense. Let's do a proper example. Let's do these two. So starting with the chlorine ion. Okay, it's called the chloride ion, chlorine. So if we look at the periodic table, Cl is over here. There it is. It's got a charge of minus one. So the chlorine atom, if I were to draw the diagram for the chlorine atom, I would draw a diagram with 17 electrons. But now it's got a charge of minus one, which means it needs an extra electron. 
So we need to draw a diagram with 18 electrons because it's Cl minus, which means it's got one extra electron. So how you will do it is as follows. You start with one S at the bottom. You don't need to draw circles. You can draw lines. You can draw squares. It doesn't matter. I just draw circles. So one S, two S, two P, three S. I actually don't know if I need to go further than that. Let's just see. I draw circles. You need to memorize this order. So you know it starts with one S, then it goes two S, two P, three S, and you need to memorize how many circles. So we are drawing something with 18 electrons. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I definitely need more. Okay, so I've got 12 so far. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. See how I added as I went along. So I don't need to draw unnecessary orbitals and energy levels, but I need to have enough. So it needs to stop at 3p. Again, you need to memorize that energy level 1 only has an s orbital. Energy level 2 has an s and a p orbital. Energy level 3 has an s and a p orbital and so on. Now what is important to note here, and this is, this is useful, is that energy level 1 is full. Energy level 2 is full. Energy level 3 is full. The outer energy level of a atom or an ion or something, that contains the valence electrons. So when it is a chlorine atom, it only has, let's see, it actually has more. So when it is a chlorine, so remember chlorine atom has 17 electrons, so it has one less. So a chlorine atom will look like this. We will take one of these away for the chlorine atom. That means that the outer energy level is not full. And count the number of electrons in that outer energy level. We've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, which means that chlorine, the chlorine atom, has seven valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons just means the electrons in the outer energy level. But when I say chlorine iron, we need to put that extra electron in there. It now has a complete outer energy level, which is why it is now considered full. It is now considered stable. It now has an, a, a a noble gas structure and the noble gas structure that it has is the same as argon because chlorine has 17 um, electrons the chloride iron has one extra so it has 18 so it has the same structure as argon what about the magnesium iron well if we look at our periodic table magnesium over here has a charge of plus two so the iron that it forms is the mg plus two iron mg2 plus iron the magnesium atom has 12 electrons 12 the atom but remember if you form an iron and in this case a two plus iron it means that you have given away two electrons so the magnesium atom will have 12 electrons the magnesium iron will have 12 minus 2 it'll have 10 electrons so when we draw the diagram for magnesium iron, we start with 1s, 2s, 2p. I don't think I need more than that. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I do not need more than that. You can see that my outer energy level is actually energy level 2, and it is now full. So basically, when it forms an iron, it has a filled outer energy level, a complete outer valence shell. It has now reached noble gas structure. So think about magnesium. It was 12. The magnesium iron lost two electrons. So instead of 12, it now has 10. It now has the structure of neon. Remember this column over here. This is the noble gases. I hope that has been helpful. Please check out the links in the description box for more videos like this. Remember, if you missed this first video, you have to go watch it to get full marks. Also, I speak about electron configuration and SP notation in that previous video. I hope to see you in another video very soon. Subscribe for more. Bye, everybody.